finally, as the Holy Spirit gives us visions, gives us dreams, the big issue then becomes, how do those dream, these dreams become reality? I'll tell you the one critical key, obedience. 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 The reason why some people are not hearing from the Holy Spirit anymore is because the last instruction the Holy Spirit gave them, they have not obeyed yet. Heaven does not waste its resources. They don't put new wine in old wine skins. They put new wine in new wine skins so that the wine will not be spilled. Obedience. Obedience. Exodus 23. Let me show you one powerful passage of scripture that God used to challenge me to walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Exodus 23 from verse 20. Exodus 23 from verse 20. It says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Verse 23 says, For my angel will go before you and bring you in to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. This is not an ordinary angel. You know why? In your Bible, the angel begins with capital A. In the next verse, when you see him, his, he, they all start with capital H. You only use that for God in the English language. So when he says angel, this is not Gabriel, this is not Michael. No angel has the right to forgive anybody's sins. This is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity in the Old Testament. He was involved in the journey of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. God the Father was present. Jesus was the lamb that was slaughtered and his blood splashed on the doorpost. After the crossing of the Red Sea, when it came to entering Canaan, entering into the manifestation of God's promises, that was the work of the Holy Spirit. The one who will take you into the land of Canaan is my angel. Because Israel then was only a type, a symbol of the New Testament Christian. But hear what God is saying about the Holy Spirit. Obey. He says, first of all, be aware of him. Recognize him. Don't trivialize him. Don't treat him like someone that is not important. Treat him like someone very important. Don't go about living your life as if he doesn't exist. Give him attention. Number two, he says, obey him. Obey him. Number three, he says, don't provoke him. Don't make him angry. Wow. But the Bible says that in Ephesians 4 verse 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. He has emotions. He can be hurt. He said, obey him. He will bring you into the land that I promised you. In Isaiah chapter 63, just to confirm again that the Holy Spirit was involved in the journey to Canaan. Isaiah chapter 63 Verses 8 to 10. It says, For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not lie. So he became their savior. 
in all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bore them and carried them all the days of old. Verse 10 says, So they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that the one God has sent to help you will not turn around to fight you. The key factor. Obedience. 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 The key factor is obedience. If you are going to walk with the Holy Spirit, you must have a very flexible mind. In Acts chapter 10, Peter was hungry, went up to the rooftop to pray. The Bible says that a great shift was lowered from heaven. All kinds of animals were there. Then God's voice came from heaven. He said, arise, Peter, kill and eat. You remember what Peter said? He said, Lord, I have never eaten an unclean thing all my life. You know... <laughs> In other words, on that sheet were all the animals they said they should not eat in the Old Testament. That's why Peter protested. Ah, Lord, <laughs> even the Bible says that we should not eat this kind of food. I've never eaten it before. I'm not eating. The Bible says that God lifted up that sheet into heaven. Then brought it down again the second time. He said, arise, Peter. Eat this thing. Peter said, Lord, I can't eat it. It's not right to eat it. God took it off. Brought it down the third time. Peter, I said you should eat this thing. Peter said, I've never eaten that kind of a thing, and I'm not eating it. So they took it up to heaven. Then God said, Peter, there are some men right now at the gate. They will ask for you. Anywhere they go, you must follow them. <laughs> Nothing doubting. You know what the whole story was about? That Cornelius, a Gentile, saw an angel and God wanted him saved and said that he should send his servants to go and call Peter. Gave him the address of the house where Peter was staying in another city to call him because God wanted the man's soul saved. God knew that Peter would not agree because the man was a Gentile. When Jesus was around, he said, I'm sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Peter wanted to preach only to Jews. He didn't want to preach to Gentiles. God knew that Peter had what you call prejudice. He had bias. He would not want to go. That's why God brought that sheet from heaven and said, Peter, eat what you have never eaten before. I want to say this. However anointed you are, if you are not willing to do something you have never done before, the Holy Spirit will abandon you somewhere and move on. When you are going to walk with the Holy Spirit, you are not the one who dictates to Him, He's the one who will dictate to you. He will ask you to do things you've never done in your life before. But of course, for you to get results you never got before, you have to be willing to do things you never did before. Peter went. When he got there, he began to talk to them about Christ. <laughs> In Acts chapter 10 verse 44, the Bible says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all those who had him. You know what I think? I think Peter's sermon was getting too long. I think while he was preaching, he was still doubting. I think he was still, there were questions that were still coming up in his mind. But hey, hey, the, the other apostles in Jerusalem must not find me. What am I doing in the house of a Gentile? But he was preaching, Sha. He was preaching. He wasn't giving the altar call on time. I think that's why the Holy Ghost overtook him. Got them born again, 
fill them with the Holy Ghost since he refused to finish the sermon on time. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you are the kind of a person who have ever said to yourself, me, I can never marry a pastor. Me? Get ready. God is coming for you. See? <laughs> when the Holy Spirit is working in your life, you never say never. There are two people with too many prejudices around. There are tribes they can't marry anybody from. In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is no male, there is no female. You can't be prejudiced, you can't be biased and work with God successfully. Me, I've never gone to a place like that before. Me, I can never do that kind of me, I can never drive that kind of car. You have to stop it. Because it means there are things the Holy Spirit will not be able to use you for or bless you with. You have to open your mind and submit to total obedience. I believe God. This time next year, by the time you come for this convention, some people here, you will be 1,000 times your current size. A prominent pastor in this nation. I heard this story many years ago. How one day, and I'm closing with this story, how one day, the Holy Spirit told him, write a check, all the money in your account, give it to the church. He was a young lawyer. All the money in his account was 3,000 naira. This was many years ago. He said he wrote the check, went to the church, and gave it to the church secretary. He said, the Lord said I should clear my account and give this money to the church. He said, she said, God bless you, sir. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. He said, he told her, I'm not a cheerful giver. This is all the money in my account. <laughs> a short while later, he woke up very early in the morning. The Holy Spirit said, move now. Go and stand in front of this particular hotel in, on Victoria Island. And he was living in the Kedja. He drove 7 a.m. He went and stood there in front of the hotel and was waiting. Then all of a sudden, he saw some men coming out of the hotel. Some Nigerians pushing this European, this white man, pushing him, rough handling him. He said, the Holy Spirit told him, go and help him. So he said, he went there and said, excuse me, what's going on? This man is my client. What did he do to you? They had tricked the man from the UK. They wanted to swindle him. The man was not cooperating. That's why they were pushing him out of the hotel. He said, you should leave him alone. They left him. So he told the man, that's okay, you can go. The man said, can I have your business card? The man gave him his own and left. He said, and the Holy Spirit told him, that's all. He went back to his office. Some few weeks later, he got a letter from the man's company in the UK, thanking him for assisting their managing director when he was in Nigeria, appointing him as their solicitor and advocate in Nigeria on retainership basis, inviting him for a meeting in London with a first-class ticket. He said that was the first time he flew first class and from that day till now he has been flying first class. Because when he came back, he came back with a check for 260,000 pounds. Obedience to the Holy Spirit. So when I say that this time next year, somebody here, you will find it difficult to contain yourself. You will request to share your testimony. If they don't allow you on time, you will harass the pastors. I must share this testimony. Because the Holy Spirit is going to show you things he's never shown you before. He will tell you things he never told you before. 
He will take you to places he's never taken you before. You will meet people you've never met in your life before. You will say what you never said before. You will do things you never did before. You will get results you never got in your life before. I'm not sure if this is for everybody, but the person I'm talking about already knows himself or herself. If you are the one I'm talking about, shout a powerful Amen. Just for a few minutes, you are going to pray. The principal factor is the Holy Spirit. Tongues of fire sat on each person on the day of Pentecost. When you catch fire, people will come and watch you burn. Our prayer, Holy Spirit, baptize me afresh. Feel me. Move me. Inspire me. Take me to heaven's frequency. In the name of Jesus Christ. On this mountain. This is my mountain of transfiguration. Change my life. Change my vision. Change my dreams. Change me from the inside out. Please go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you being men know how to give good gifts to your children. How will your heavenly father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Ask for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit today. Baptize me afresh. I know you've been filled with the Holy Ghost before, but it's a new season. I came to announce a new season. You will arise and have mercy upon Zion. The time to favor her, the set time has come. Lift your voice and call on God. The day Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan, he was not the only one that was baptized. But he was the only one who went into the water praying. He went in praying. As he came out, the heavens opened. Lord, open the heavens over my life. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come on me. While I'm here, oh God, on this mountain of transfiguration. My mountain of transformation. Lord, this convention is my place of change. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Cause me to see things I've never seen before. Help me to dream dreams, to see visions. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. If you can pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yay! New visions. New dreams. New visions. New dreams. New visions. New dreams. Creativity. New designs, new ideas, fresh instructions from heaven. Yay! Baptize me afresh. Ignite me with your fire. Ignite me with the fire of your spirit. Use me like you never used me before. Open my eyes. Where people see problems, oh God, help me to see the solution. Where they see barrenness, help me to see fruitfulness. Where they see lack, help me to see abundance. Where they see sicknesses, help me to see healing. Where they see failure, help me to see success. Where they see stagnation, help me to see promotion. Yes, Lord. Where people see obstacles, help me to see the possibility for miracles. Open my eyes. Baptize me afresh with your spirit. Baptize me afresh with your spirit. It's the dawn of a new day. Five loaves of bread and two fish can feed a crowd. I step out from the realm of lack and limitation into the realm of possibilities. No limits. In the realm of imagination, the Holy Ghost removes the limits. All things are possible to him that believes. Lord, but faith in my spirit on a new dimension. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. May I ask you to lift your hands to heaven as we pray? Heavenly Father, I have spoken not my words, but your words. I receive over everyone under the sound of my voice. 
even the one that will listen to the CD of this message, I receive open heavens. I receive for each one a new level of spiritual authority. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. And I give you authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Heavenly Father, on the behalf of everyone standing here today, I speak to the prince of the devil over Nigeria. I speak to the prince of the devil over every city, every state in this nation. I declare by the authority in the name of the one who died, the one who destroyed the powers of hell and of death on the cross and rose on the third day, I declare, Satan, you are cast down. Everyone here will tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I declare that nothing shall by any means hurt you. By the authority in the name of Christ, I declare you are blessed. You cannot be cursed.